What's up everybody? Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different on this channel and uh, trying my hand at some D&D homebrew. Specifically today I'm going to be putting together a subclass based on the symbiotes from Marvel Comics including uh, Venom, Carnage, and that whole family of characters. Without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that we got to figure out for this subclass is what class is it going to be for? So there are several options that we could choose from. Uh, so the ones that I'm leaning between, I think it could be a barbarian. You know, barbarians kind of run on that like battle rage. Could be a rogue. It could be potentially a warlock. You know, you could see the Venom symbiote as kind of the patron of the character. Or even a sorcerer. You know, a sorcerer's power comes from, you know, exposure to otherworldly forces a lot of times. So the symbiote could be seen as a manifestation of that. Um, I think I don't want this character to be a spellcaster, though. That doesn't seem as fitting for a uh, Marvel symbiote, so I think I'm gonna either choose between a rogue or a barbarian. And I actually think barbarian would work really well. Uh, so I think we're gonna go with a barbarian subclass. So let's start off by just kind of uh, looking at the barbarian class. I've never actually played a barbarian before, so uh, let's just see what some of the subclasses have in common and we'll use those as a reference. Alright, so of course they've got their Rage, gives them Strength, uh, Resistance, right? So I think that the Venom Symbiote would be a good flavor fit for that. The Symbiote characters tend to be really resilient anyways, and uh, have some form of, like, Bloodlust. And it looks like they have uh, Primal Path features at 3rd, 6th, 10th and 14th level so we need to make sure that we include those i'm just gonna bring up like a marvel wiki like symbiotes marvel and uh just kind of get some inspiration on what types of abilities we might want for our character let's go down here to powers and abilities they feed on their host adrenaline didn't know that they can steal powers from those that they've been imprinted on. Uh, we see that with Venom stealing Spider-Man's powers. Wonder if that's something that we could do something with. So let's see. Stealing powers from those they are bonded to? Question mark. Have some ability to sense the thoughts and emotions of sentient creatures. Genetic memory, allowing them to exploit their parents' knowledge through ancestral recall. Uh, could be used to like grant additional ability scores and things, so that could be interesting. Uh, their unique properties make the symbiotes immune to most conventional weapons. Yeah, so barbarians already have something similar to that. They have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. Siphoning away godhood. <laughs> so it seems like a lot of Venom's abilities specifically were because of bonding with Spider-Man. Uh, so, like, uh, the ability to cling to surfaces and produce webbing. So, that's not a thing that all symbiotes have. Uh, have the power to form solid appendages from their bodies and be shown to form spikes, talons, and blades. Well, alright guys, I think we have a, uh, a good starting point to work with. I'm going to uh, go off and actually put together this class, and then I'll come back when I'm done. So, I'll see you all in a bit. All right, so here's what I came up with. So it's Path of the Symbiote Barbarian. Barbarians on the Path of the Symbiote draw their power from an extraterrestrial parasite known as a Clintar. This symbiote resides inside of the barbarian's body and grants them additional power, as well as an insatiable desire to destroy their enemies and consume their brains. So at third level, we're gonna get these symbiotic weapons, which allows the symbiote to form weapons from their body uh, these weapons can take the form of any weapon in the player's handbook. You can change it with a bonus action, and uh, you can have up to two of them active at a time. The weapons cannot be thrown, but you are proficient with them. So in addition, because the symbiote has the ability to kind of stretch its limbs and extend out these pseudopods, 
uh, your range for your melee attacks and grapples increases by five feet. Uh, so at six level, you gain access to the extraterrestrial hive mind uh, because the symbiotes have a, a hive mind and they can all communicate with each other, share experiences and things like that. So beginning at six level, you gain the ability to speak telepathically with any number of creatures within 120 feet of you and can hear their telepathic responses. When you make an intelligence or wisdom ability check or saving throw, you can call upon your hive mind to grant you advantage on that dice roll. This ability is basically calling on the hive mind to grant you assistance on these ability checks or saving throws. And you can do this a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and regain all expended uses on a long rest. At level 10, you gain the improved symbiotic weapons. So now you get a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls with your symbiotic weapon, and it counts as magical for the purposes of overcoming uh, resistance or immunity to non-magical damage. Also at 10th level, you gain Consume Brains. So when an enemy within your melee attack range drops to zero HP, you may consume their brain to regain a number of hit points equal to your constitution modifier. No action required. So yeah, so any dead enemies in your area, you can just scoop up those brains to get some extra HP back. Finally, uh, Capstone at level 14, uh, which I forgot to put here, but it's at level 14, you gain the form of the Clintar. So while raging, you can use a bonus action to allow your symbiote to take control of your body for one minute. While in this form, you are immune to non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage, uh, but have vulnerability to fire and thunder damage. This is because symbiotes in the comics, they have a weakness to uh, loud noises and heat. The range of your melee attacks and grapples increases by an additional five feet, so up to uh, an additional 10 feet total and you can grapple up to two creatures at once. So once you use the form of the Clintar, you cannot use it again until you take a long rest. So that's uh, what I came up with for my Venom symbiote inspired subclass. Uh, I want to know what you guys think about it. Uh, would you use this subclass in your games? What do you think of the abilities that I chose? Do you think it's maybe underpowered, maybe overpowered, uh, what, would you, what would you think? I would love to hear your comments and suggestions for this class in the comments, and uh, let me know if you actually end up uh, playing this class. I would love to hear about it. I would also love to hear any suggestions for uh, future homebrew ideas you'd like me to put together on this channel, whether that be a subclass, a race, a uh, magic item, new spell, or whatever. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more homebrew videos on this channel in the future. Until then, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.